All right, last call for a volunteer. Otherwise, we're going to whittle down to two teams and not three. Which hurts my heart a little bit, but I'm going to be okay with it. Last call. Come on, it's going to be fun. We've got trivia. We don't have candy today, but we'll have candy next week. We have popcorn and soda. And you can get a gift certificate. Incentives. <laughs> All right, don't everybody run up here at once. Are we live on Facebook? Hi, Facebook. Hi. I'm Tessa. Yes. All right, two teams it is. We're going to get started very shortly. All right. I know you guys have been really um, anxiously anticipating the beginning of the second installment of the POW series here at UTA Libraries in the Fab Lab. My name is Tessa White. I will be emceeing this event this month. If you were here for our event last semester, I was uh, along in this journey, and it's a good time. So uh, for those of you who don't know, the POW stands for Pitch of the Week. And it's a contest where we welcome three teams, but today it's going to be two, competing for advancement to the final round to be held on November 30th. Our teams today are Team 1, the Wild Turkeys, Gobble Gobble. Give them a round of applause. Hi, Team 1. I'll introduce them individually in a little bit. Skipping Team 2. And we have team three, the Leaf Peepers. A little round of applause for them as well. Thank you. So our teams will be given a random prompt and 20 minutes to devise a pitch based on the prompt. It can be an idea for an invention, a product or a service, a solution to a pressing problem. How many of those do we have? Or anything else that speaks to the prompt. It does not need to be feasible or practical. As long as you stick to the prompt, it doesn't matter how risky, ridiculous, or imaginary you get. We want you to be creative. It is okay to get weird. Did you hear that? Weirdness is encouraged. Get weird, Facebook. All right. So our teams will be judged by our illustrious judges, who I will also introduce here shortly. Uh, they'll be judged on their teamwork, communication, and creative thinking. You can use the internet to brainstorm, and then you will deliver the pitch using PowerPoint or any other method that you choose. You can also use Google Slides or Prezi or just stand and speak, old-fashioned style. And um, that those are the resources that you will have available to you. Over here on this lovely whiteboard uh, is all the information that you guys might need watching along. Facebook, zoom in. The Facebook Live URL is facebook.com slash UTA libraries. YouTube will be archiving these videos if you want to watch them. They also have um, our last semester's videos for your perusal, citing stuff. YouTube.com slash user slash UTA library. We also have a live poll going on once we get into the judging that you can, those of you here watching or if you're watching from the interwebs, you can vote and we're going to watch it fluctuate right here on the screen. Isn't that exciting? Libguides, oh yeah, 
That's where the poll is, yes. So you can find the poll at libguides.uta.edu slash pow slash poll. We also have a hashtag, you guys. So post on social media, hashtag POWUTA. Let the world know of this creative glory. All right. Now, here comes the prompt. So since we don't have three teams, I I'll choose the card from the second deck. But these three decks represent a discipline, a material, and an equipment. And those are the three aspects that you will use to come up with your prompt. So team one, randomly pick a card from that deck. And this is going to be the discipline. The discipline for this prompt is beer brewing. Tasty. Love them hops. Give me, I give me an IPA. I'm just, I don't know. Um, all right, so for the material, it's going to be sticky notes. What are you going to do with that? Don't know. Do you want to, are you writing the, the thingies down? Our discipline is beer brewing. And our material is sticky notes. And lastly, choose a card, any card, top of the deck will do. The equipment is going to be vacuum molding machine. Wow. Beer brewing, sticky notes, vacuum molding machine. What are you going to do with that? Okay? So those are our discipline, material, and equipment categories for this pitch. Oh, we currently don't have any internet connection. Okay. So do we have it here? Can we switch over here? Problem solving. That's what it's all about. Thank you. Can you just launch a browser and see if we've got internet? You should just be able to select Firefox and see what that does. Okay, looks like we're good over here. So now, we are going to actually get started. We will be starting the timer very, very shortly. Yes. You can, again, you can use the internet to get inspiration and information. I was just trying to think of more Asian words, but I blanked. Okay, are we ready to start the clock? Almost logged in. Me don't start quite yet, you guys, because we haven't started the clock. Awesome. We're connected. Yay. Okay. Martin, we're ready to start the clock. Again, you will have 20 minutes once the timer starts. Those, yes, that's what you're doing. You're creating a pitch. So you're coming up with a, um, an invention or improving on something that already exists or a brand new idea using those three. Yes, yes. Yes, we are ready. Ready, steady. All right, and we're, we're off. 20 minutes. So I'm gonna introduce our team members from the wild turkeys. Uh, and thankfully, they're both, we had a lot of no-shows today, and they're both volunteers, so we're very grateful for that. Jinsey Thomas is right here, and she is a junior marketing and management major. And Subrat Parajuli is a sophomore electrical engineering mi major with a minor in sustainable engineering, which I told him is my favorite kind of engineering. 
So I have a little trivia for the audience and viewers at home based off of the title of this team, which is fun to do an internet search off of the wild turkeys or wild turkeys in general. Lots of really cool pictures. And if you're here next week, I'll make sure that there's candy because we kind of like throw candy out for the right answers or the wrong answers, doesn't matter. But in the meantime, we do have popcorn and soda. All right, first question about wild turkeys. Does anybody know where do wild turkeys sleep? I did not know the answer to this. Anyone have a guess? Where do wild turkeys sleep? At the Hilton? No. They wish. In the wild, that's right. But specifically, anyone want to take a guess? They make burrows. Yeah, actually, that, I think that's probably true, but they do it in trees. Random. Can you imagine seeing a wild turkey in a tree? I can now, because I did it in my head, and it's pretty fun. Gobble, gobble. Where were wild turkeys first domesticated? Does anybody know the answer to that? Where were wild turkeys first domesticated? Anyone want to guess? United States is not the answer, but thank you for taking a guess. Does anyone, wanna, anyone else want to try and guess where were wild turkeys first domesticated? England? Good guess, but that is not the right answer. The answer is Mexico. Just let's have a wild turkey at home, you know? I, it makes sense to me. Which U.S. founding father recommended the turkey for a national bird? Do you know the answer? You are correct, sir. Go get yourself some popcorn and a soda. I, I didn't bring any candy. I didn't know I was supposed to. But hasn't everybody had enough candy this week? That's why I didn't. Because so much candy. Because of Halloween. But next week, we'll fill your bellies with empty sugar again. All right, last trivia question about the wild turkeys. What type, and this is my favorite one, of popular Kentucky spirit is named after the bird? Anyone? What type of popular Kentucky spirit, as in booze, is named after the bird? Come on! Y'all don't know this? I know, I know one of y'all know this. What type? That's right, wild turkey bourbon. It goes down real warm. I've never tried it before. That's a lie. All right, that's it for the wild turkey trivia. Thank you for your participation. All right, now I'm skipping the pumpkin eaters because we don't have them. Except we do have Nathan Sundquist, who was a pumpkin eater, and now he's a leaf peeper. And Nathan is a senior economics major who minors in business administration. And Cam Wen back here is a senior computer science major, correct? And Clarissa Osagi is a junior biochemistry and biology major who minors in creative writing. Beautiful. Lovely. And they are the leaf peepers. Oh, we got candy. Look at that. All right. So that's great. Okay, so Martin's got the candy for the incentive of participating in our wonderful trivia. I don't know why I had to say that like Katherine Hepburn, but I did. Okay, Leaf Peepers Trivia. Never thought I'd say those three words together, but it's a new day. All right, Leaf Peeping 
is the custom of traveling to or vacationing in New England for the primary purpose of viewing what? Who said that? Who said leaves? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't spot who actually said that. Did you? Oh my God, my hearing is awful. So you're right, it is leaves, but specifically it's the autumn fall foliage, which is just brilliant and beautiful if you ever get a chance to see it. It really is amazing. All the reds, huh? In New England, all the reds, all the oranges, all the yellows, all the greens. It's so beautiful. Lots of photo ops for Instagram and Facebook, you guys. Hey, Facebook Live. <laughs> okay. Which leaf peeping state boasts tourism as its biggest industry? Anyone have an idea? Which leaf peeping state boasts tourism as its biggest industry? Anyone want to take a guess? No, but thank you for guessing. It, it, it would be a New England state. Hmm? That's a really good guess, and the foliage there is beautiful, but it is not Vermont. Anyone else want to take a guess? One of those teeny little states up there. It's Maine. Now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. There you go, folks. OK. Mami Jigari is a similar tradition in what country? I think it's Momi Jigari. Did I say it right? Momi Jigari is a similar tradition in what country? Oh, Asami got it correct. Japan is the correct country. Would you like some candy, little girl? All right, last trivia question about the leaf peepers. What group invades Quahog in the Family Guy episode about leaf peepers called leafers in the episode? Anyone? What group invades, did I say it right, Quahog? Quahog. What group invades Quahog in the Family Guy episode af about leaf peepers called leafers in the episode? What's the group? This is, this is a group near and dear to my heart. Yeah. What are you going to do? Huh? There's a clue about the group of New Yorkers. If any of my New Yorkers are watching, that's where I'm from. So nobody got it right, but whatever. That was our last Leaf Peepers trivia question. And since we have some time, I'm going to just go into the trivia that we had prepared for the pumpkin eaters, even though they're not here. Because this trivia thing is going so well. <laughs> All right. And if you're guessing at home, I feel it. So thank you. I can't give you candy through the screen, but, but I'm giving you love from my heart. All right. What is the first name? Of the infamous nursery rhyme, what do you need? What did you say? Oh, sorry. What is the name of the infamous nursery rhyme antagonist for whom Team 2 is named? Team 2 is non-existent, but they were the pumpkin eaters. Yes. Peter, Peter. Pumpkin eater. The correct answer was Peter, or Peter, Peter. What or who did he put into a pumpkin shell? Dr. Savan got it right. His wife. He put his wife into a pumpkin shell, <laughs> which is, should, was probably awkward. Who was the original drummer? I like this one in the 1990s era iconic grunge band, Smashing Pumpkins. Who was the original drummer, you guys? Anybody know? You can use Google. 
Who was the original? Wait, did somebody say it? Oh, it wasn't Dave Grohl. Wrong band, right? Who is Dave Grohl in? Yeah, that Dave, Dave Grohl is Nirvana. Wait, what? Who, did you? Who's the drummer of Smashing Pumpkins, original? I'm still not hearing the correct answer. Yeah. You got the first name right. Candy over here. Jimmy Chamberlain. That's right. Thank you. That is correct. Jimmy Chamberlain was the original drummer of of the Smashing Pumpkins. What is the surname of Jack the Pumpkin King, the hero in Tim Burton's A Nightmare Before Christmas? What is the surname of Jack the Pumpkin King, the hero in Tim Burton's A Night Before Christmas? Nightmare Before Christmas, sorry. Anybody know? What is the surname of Jack the Pumpkin King? Yes, Skellington. She's multitasking over here. She's pitching. She's doing trivia. We got the correct answer over here, too, even though you don't want any candy. But that's OK. I appreciate the participation. That's right. It's Skellington, Jack Skellington. Okay, you guys, that was the end of the trivia. Do we still have pump, um, popcorn going? It's gone, it's done. All right, well, if you do want some candy and you're still hanging out and watching, please feel free to come up. We'll give you some candy. I'm going to introduce our judges now. Thank you so much for being here and participating today. First, we have Dr. Laurel Stevan, who is the chair of the Department of Linguistics. Dr. Laurel Smith-Devan is an Associate Professor of Linguistics at UTA and Chair of the Department of Li Linguistics and TESOL. Did I say that right? Is that how you guys say it? TESOL. TESOL. That sounds like it could be a nickname for me. Like, I got soul. You can just call me TESOL. You know. She has published in the journals Communication and Medicine, Lingua, and Corpora. And, in, and you've edited volumes on nominal determination and corpus linguistics. She is a Wikipedia editor, an NPR contributor, and an unabashed bookworm. Welcome, Dr. Sivan. That's right, give her some, get, I wanna hear those hands coming together. Thank you. Chris Tracy here in the middle is a community entrepreneur at, at Center Space, correct? Chris Tracy, um, along with being the, a community entrepreneur with a background in computer science and programming, he specializes in web application development and has 18 years experience in the field. He has started several companies over the years. Most of his time lately is spent running a women's athletic apparel company, leading the technical team at a legal software company and running downtown Arlington's newest co-working space, Center Space. So you're not busy, right? Not at all. Give him a round of applause. Welcome, Chris Tracy. And Dr. Peter Crouch, who I'm sure many of you know, he judged with us last year a couple times, right? He joined UTA in August 2016 as Dean of the College of Engineering and as a Professor of Electrical Engineering. Dean Crouch has served a total of 21 years as Dean of Arizona State University's Ira A. Fulton School of Engineering and Dean of Engineering at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Did I say that right? Yay. A native of England, Crouch earned his undergraduate degree in engineering science from Warwick University in Coventry in 1973 and his master's degree in control theory from Warwick the following year. Crouch then earned his PhD in Applied Sciences from Harvard University in 1977. So impressive. Such an honor to have you here with us, Dr. Crouch. Thank you for being here. Yes, give him a round of applause. All right, so we have five minutes and 40 seconds left, you guys. That's not much time. 
Five minutes and 33 seconds, actually, to be exact, and counting. Do those of you who are watching and engaged have any idea of what you might do with these three elements for a pitch? And if so, would you share it with us? You want to think for a second? Anybody have any ideas of what they would do with beer brewing, sticky notes, and vacuum machine molding, vacuum molding machine? What do you think? No idea? I know, it's random. What are you supposed to do with the sticky notes? Yeah, I mean, you have what you create. The sticky notes thing makes me think of Romy and Michelle's high school reunion when they say that they inv invented post-its. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Claire Henry, you guys. Hi. <laughs> I invented post-its. That's what they said they're, they had accomplished when they go for their high school reunion, and they get exposed as liars. Anyone? Romy, Michelle? I would make beer bottles and use the sticky notes as labels, and they can custom design beer bottles and have a beer made for them. That's awesome. That sounds awesome. And what would you do, how would you incorporate the vacuum molding machine? I don't know what that is. Right, well, this is where the interwebs would help you. I'm getting lipstick all over this mic. <laughs> Sorry, tech guys. So you would custom design the bottles with the machine? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So for those of you who didn't hear that, she said that she would uh, design a, a new beer and use the sticky notes as the labels, incorporating the sticky notes with the label as the labels and using the vacuum molding machine to customize the bottles and labels, correct? Awesome sauce. Anyone else have any ideas of what they would do? Three minutes and six seconds. Time keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking into the future. Last time I did Jeopardy theme song. Thought that was a little tired, so. Uh, Sami, do you want to come talk about the Strategic uh, Initiatives Lounge? Uh, Sami Nagakura is the coordinator of the Startup Lounge. And she's going to tell you about it in these last couple of minutes that we have. Hi, Asami. Hi, Hi everybody. Um, I work at a place called the Startup Lounge. That's an entrepreneurship center on campus. We have um, seminars every week, every week on Wednesday, 5.30 to 7-ish. Um, it's very casual. We don't need um, any pre-knowledge like, to attend. And um, next Wednesday, we are having um, finding funding. So if you ever thought about starting a business and wondered about where you find your funding, that'll be a good session to come. I'll, um, I look forward to see you all. Thank you, Asami. Yes, yes. Get that clap going. All right, guys. We have one minute and 30 seconds to go. A minute and a half, less than now, because those seconds just go by the second. What are you gonna do for your pitch? What is it gonna be? I wrote that. Thank you. I'm a songwriter on the side. So don't steal that melody, because I'll know, and I'll sue you. We do have less than a minute. Exactly 55 seconds before we will need you to be ready to present your pitch of the week. <laughs> I'm a nerd. All right. We are down 
to 30 seconds. 30 seconds, folks. Less than. What's it going to be? Finalize those PPTXs or Prezies or just whatever you're going to do. Google Slides. So many resources available these days for presentations. It's just great. And 20 minutes is up. Time up. Stop the creation. Time is up. This is exciting. What's it gonna be? All right. So these next 20 minutes is the pitching and judging portion of the event. So you each get five minutes to present. And Martin will be keeping a timer. So do we have a volunteer who wants to go first? OK. Wild turkeys. Going to do it. So can you come out here up front? Are you going to use your whiteboard? OK. Can you all see from there? All right. Oh, yeah, you get a microphone. You get this microphone. Let me wipe off my lipstick. All right, everybody, here's the pitch. For team one, the wild turkeys. All right, so the concept that we're trying to build is using a vacuum molding machine, a sticky notes, and that's something related with the beer brewing. So basically, so this is a typical, so we're going to create a big company, right? So we're going to be established in every kind of, every kind of bar and clubs. So basically, we're going to build a beer brewing machine, a, a beer machine right here. So you have, so there are like three kinds of beers, like, like a fountain of Cokes and stuff. So you have a beer that comes out from here. You have a whiskey, and you have water that comes out from these parts. And this is made out of the vacuum molding machine. So we just mold it, and it's made out of plastic and metals and stuff like that. And here down here, we have a table or a plastic, uh, a plastic cover. We have something. I don't know how to explain that. So it's basically a table, and like you cover it with the plastic so that people don't steal it, right? Because, and these are like the coupons that you get. So basically, you create an online account. You create an online account, and you add money to your account, basically. And whichever bar you go in a certain location that's where, that we're affiliated with, you could just go inside the bar. Here's a keyboard, right? So you can just type in your password, and then <laughs> you could just click one of these. Either you want Bud Light, Corona, Jack Daniels, you want water, you want fireball, you want Jim Beam, it's all up to you. So you, and these are like the sticky notes, right? So basically, like, like the different colors. If you press red, you gotta get Bud Light. If you press blue, you get Corona, green, JD. So basically, you type in your password, and then you click either one of them, which you wanna drink. So let's see, I press JD, I wanna have a whiskey JD. I press a green button, and the sticky notes just comes out. And like, it's, a, it's a special kind of sticky notes. It's not like a general sticky note. So it's, it's like electric, electric coded, electronics, electronically coded, uh, the sticky notes. So you, it just comes out, and you see that you just insert it right here. So basically, when you insert it right here, as long as you, once you put your glass right here, the whiskey starts pouring, pouring down to the glass. And then, I'm pretty sure people just can't drink the whiskey by itself. So you need some water, right? So you can put in your password, you click in water, the yellow, the, the yellow sticky note comes out and you just insert it in. And once you move your bottle from here to the water, the water just starts pouring in. And, it, and, and, as long, and if you're done filling the water, you can just take it out and it automatically stops. So this is what we created. And this is gonna be, we're, we're, we're gonna try to con contact every bar in Dallas Waters area so we could put this in each and every location because people like to party during Fridays and during, on the, during weekends. And they're kind of uh, not scared, but you know, like people don't usually carry money and stuff. And now everything's going wireless. People don't even carry wallets no more. They just have wallets in their cell phones and stuff like that. So you, you don't need to have your wallet. You don't even need to have your cell phone. As long as you remember your passcode, you can just do it online on the weekdays. You just fill your money in the account and as long when the Friday comes down to party, just go inside the bar, any bar in Dallas for the area. So you can just go drink as much as you can. You could give party to the people around the bar and just have a good time.
Excellent. The wild turkeys. Judges, do you have any clarifying questions for the wild turkeys? No clarifying questions? Great idea. Is there a, uh, is there a limit on the amount of drinks one user can consume in a time period? No, because to enter a bar, basically, you have to be plus 21. And we don't really care. It's like freedom. You want to drink how much you want to drink, but people have to be careful. It's up to them. But like, the, the reason we don't put any restriction is that if, if, there's a, if there's a person and he wants to pay for other people's stuff, you can go ahead and print. Uh, you can pay for other people. So there's no restriction how much a person can drink. And like, people like to party, so we just don't want to interfere with their personal life. So as long as they're OK with drinking, we have no problem with that. As long as we get money, though. Thanks. Just enter at your own risk. Any other clarification questions from the judges? Not right now. OK, great job, guys. Give the wild turkeys a round of applause. Excellent. Leaf peepers. Are you ready to rock? You can run it. Who's going to be doing the speaking? Nathan? Or all three of you? You can pass the mic. It's wireless, you guys. Oh. Yes. OK, so. To begin with, we were thinking of using the uh, molding machine um, to eliminate the problem that you see on the screen here, which is obviously that uh, when you're at any diff standardized product with uh, manufacturers of uh, beer, alcohols, or with kegs that you use for parties, you're going to get a standardized product, obviously, if you're going to have a brand name. Um, but we're thinking of specializing that, especially with, especially concerning the instance of kegs with parties, when you're hosting a party, you want to entertain your guests. And it's you know better to entertain your guests when you have some sort of flair or uh, and I you know a theme of flair and entertaining um, piece to uh, you know accentuate the atmosphere of the party for whatever reason I'm not using the mic very well sorry <laughs> so to that point we're using the vacuum molding machine to create custom kegs and bottles that you can specially order what and taps that we can order. Uh, to fit a certain theme, and specifically, we use the example of Star Wars. But you know, with the modern day and age, if you have theme parties, Star Wars parties, Star Trek parties, whatever parties, Game of Thrones parties, you can have specially ordered products, custom made products using the vacuum molding machine to deliver to your uh, party or your door. Um, of course, for the specific of beer, but we have used the sticky notes, of course. So, and that is implemented in two ways. The first one is through our production process where we have both a digitized system where we uh, identify certain product categories, especially, specifically, for example, Star Wars, we have Death Star kegs, Star Destroyer kegs, Darth Vader bottles. These are all Star Wars category products, so we have them uh, assign a code. S but secondary to that, we also have a paper system involving sticky notes where we identify by color and a short uh, you know, digit to assign the different categories so we know where to ship them out to different locations and by you know, what product category they are. Um, uh, sort of the idea behind this is, one, again, you have a two-tiered system. Uh, in case of some sort of failure with the digitized system, any sort of uh, complications, bugs, uh, power outages, we can rely on the paper system. Secondly, when we're hiring new employees to expand our business, I find that with older employees, it's far easier to integrate them with a traditional uh, paper-based uh, matching mechanism than it is through a digitized one. It takes less training costs to bring them up to speed. But the second way we're implementing our sticky notes is through a uh, sort of leave a note uh, system where, where we're using, and maybe I'm stretching the idea of a sticky note a little far, I would consider it just to be a piece of paper with a certain amount of adhesive, uh, where you attach a note to the final product so you can leave a message to whoever you're ordering it for. For example, you know, uh, may the force be with you if you're sending a Star Destroyer, anything like that, leave a message and a kind note. Um, so it serves that purpose as well. And of course, with we can, if we use multi using sticky notes in across multiple functions, we can order them more of them in bulk and reduce our uh, average costs for that specific purchase. Anything else? Sorry. I'm sorry, a little bit speaking fast. Um, I think that's it.
Did you, sorry, did you need, need to repeat anything? Because I might have spoken too fast. Okay. Judges, do you have any clarifying questions for the leaf peepers? We've got, we've got some fans in the back for T3. I still don't understand where the beer brewing comes in. So if you want to send your friend, say, like a fat tire in a actual tire-shaped vessel, then you can send it and you're like, here, I got you, buddy, on a sticky note. <laughs> fat tire is a good beer. <laughs> Weird name, good beer. Any other Clarifying questions, judges. For some reason, I can't help but start to say judges like Cat Dealey does, and so you think you can dance? Yo, judges. Anybody watch it? It bugs me, and it's in me. What does that mean? <laughs> All right, so judges now get five minutes to use your rubrics to cast your vote for the winner of today's pitch. Oh. The week. You guys did a great job. Thank you so much for participating. Are you doing a time time for limit for this? Oh yes. Our live voting poll, if you guys want to vote from here, is right here. Libguides.uta.edu slash pow slash poll. Hi. Go ahead and vote, and we're going to watch it live on Facebook Live. Oh, are we not going to watch it? The Is it not a live poll? Not a live poll. I lied. Lied about the live part. And I'm sorry. Okay, so Martin's going to track the total and show it to us when it's time. And if we have a tie amongst the judges, the poll will dictate the winner. I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did it. Is that um, weird dude on Jeopardy still? The one that was like, does anybody watch Jeopardy? Like I do. Well, he is the host, indeed. But there's been a guy recently that's been all kinds of crazy, and he won a bunch of money, but he's like, has all the crazy expressions and um, comments and such like. <laughs> I forget his name. He had like big hair. My friend Jay Randall knows who I'm talking about. You know, sometimes you got to make the most out of your opportunities in life, and that guy did. I think he won like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Judges, do you have your decision? You do. Okay. And so we've got we've got the vote here on our poll, and our judges are, and it is not a tie. Correct? You have a definitive winner. Great. Dr. Stevan, do you want to say who our winner is? Um, I have the winner as the Peepers. Leaf Peepers is our winner. Team three, give them a round of applause, you guys. Team three slash two, the Leaf Peepers. Awesome job, guys. So the Leaf Peepers are the winners for this week, which means you guys will compete on November 30th in our POW finale. Wild Turkeys, you did an awesome job. Thank you so much for participating. Please come back and be a part of the audience. And when we uh, do this in the future, I'd love to have you participate again. Nathan is a repeat uh, contestant. Oh, yeah, judges. Do you have some feedback for our winning, both of our competing teams? Yeah? Both fantastic ideas. Um, and I think you both did uh, did great presentations with, with uh, the resources and time given. That was a good job. Um, I, I would say that I don't think the, the material of the sticky notes was, was as prominent in the products as I would have liked to have seen it. 
it was more of a kind of an afterthought as kind of a tag it with a sticky note. It's used as a sticky note. I would have liked to have seen some creativity there with the primary material. Uh, but great job overall, I think. Yeah, I, I want to say that's a tricky combination of ingredients to work with. <laughs> so, yeah, so good job coming up with something and something distinct in each case. Um, and for the peepers, I do really like your graphics and the idea that there's many different forms. Um, and for the wild turkeys, I would use that if I were at a restaurant. So that, that was a great choice, too. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, Dr. Crouch? It's okay if you don't. Personally, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more uh, demonstration of the teamwork involved. Um, so if, if you're going to do this again, try to, try to sort of indicate how the team comes up with the solution. Excellent feedback. Thank you, judges. Can we get another round of applause for our judges today? Thank you so much for joining us. Teams, thank you for your excellent work. We'll see you guys on November 30th at 12 o'clock. And for those of you watching, interested, and wanting to participate, we need team members for the next round of this, which is next Thursday. Same time, same place, same Facebook Live channel. So let Martin know, and you can also go to libguides.uta.edu slash POW for all of the information, and there's a sign-up link there as well. You will get a gift certificate for $10 for participating. To, uh, you've, got an op you've got options, you got Einstein Bros, you got printing services, you got Amazon, you got Starbucks. Pick your gift certificate. And you will be competing for the chance to win a $50 gift certificate at the final on November 30th. My name's Tessa White. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.